Hello, trumpet friends and jazz friends. Uh, what I want to talk to you about today is the skills that we don't practice. If you're one of my jazz students or a trumpet student that's practicing jazz with me, uh, you'll be surprised maybe, if, depending on how much you know about this stuff, you'll be surprised by the list of skills that I will tell you don't practice that skill. At least as part of my lesson, we don't do it, okay? The blue scale, is that a shocker? The bebop scale, the natural minor scale, Dorian minor, Phrygian minor, Lydian, Mixolydian, Locrian, Lydian augmented, diminished whole tone, super Locrian, altered scale, Lydian dominant, and the list is actually much longer than that. That's what I have written down here. Those are skills that I don't want my students to practice. And we're going to talk a little bit about why we don't want that. Now, the first two are for the same reason. The first two. Now, to, to, to kind of make my point, repeat after me. Blues is not a scale. Let's say it again. Re repeat after me. Blues is not a scale. Okay? Blues is not a scale. And in writing about this earlier, I said, you can't get there from here. And what I mean by that is that um, practicing a scale doesn't get you to where you can do that stuff that sounds so bluesy in your jazz. And in fact, if you play a scale in your jazz improv, it's going to sound like what? A scale. Are scales cool? No, scales aren't cool. When you play stuff that sounds like a scale, it doesn't sound like music. That's why we call it a scale, right? Okay. The stuff that sounds so cool that's bluesy in your jazz solo comes from the jazz language. There are, ja there are blues portions of the jazz language because the, the, the jazz comes from the blues. All right, jazz is, blues is one of those things that, that came together to create the jazz language. Okay, so there's remnants of the blues that's still in there. But you don't get that in your playing by practicing a scale. And the same thing is true for the bebop scale. Bebop, let's repeat after me. Bebop is not a scale. Bebop is not a scale. Both of those. If you want to have what, what people are looking for there, you're not going to get it from a scale. And if you do even, let's say you want to do the scale just because, the effort it would take to make the scale do that for you, it's just not, it's unnatural. Jazz doesn't have to be as unnatural as that. Go learn the language, okay? Learn the language. Um, now, I have my theory about why this happens. I have my theory about why the blue scale comes out, uh, what, you know, why academic folk teach the, the blues scale, why they teach the bebop scale. I have a, this theory that says they look at what the greats did, and because they're not thinking along the lines of how the greats were thinking, they grasp for whatever it is that they know. And they just take all those notes that, that were common when it sounded bluesy, when it sounded bebop, 
They take those notes, they combine them, and they say, hey, look, what that person did was a scale. But I promise you that person was probably not thinking about the scale. I think there are exceptions today. There's exceptions today because today there are people who learned the scale when they were younger and now have turned that into something. Personally, I don't think even with that, that doesn't validate the scale. But anyway, moving on. Let's look at the other scales that I listed here. You'll notice that they're all modes. Modes of the um, major scale, and then the, other, the last half is modes of the melodic minor. Okay? And if you are practicing your scales using my tonalization study approach. The tonalization studies are so comprehensive that they overlap with the modes. And I'm going to demonstrate that for you right now. Okay? I'm going to do the first exercise on C in the major scale from my tonalization studies. <laughs> I'm now going to play the D Dorian mode using the same system, right? D Dorian tonalization study. Guess what? I hope you noticed this. It's the exact same study. Exactly the same. The only difference, I shouldn't say exactly. <laughs> the only difference is where you start. It's the same exercise. Everything is exactly the same except where you start. So when we're looking at the modes of the major scale, they're all in there. Every single one of the modes is present inside of the tonalization studies. The tonalization studies are a wonderful way to learn a scale. Uh, in my opinion, the best way to learn a scale. Uh, of course, it's my system, so I would think that, right? Uh, and if, if we wanted to take the modes seriously, and applied the tonalization studies to the modes, it's the same exercise. So yes, there is no benefit for doing that exercise all over again, but starting on a different note. And the same thing is true for, you know, like the, the super Locrian, the altered scale, the diminished whole tone, the Lydian augmented, those are all modes of the melodic minor. Right? Those are all the, the it's, it's the same stuff. So what scales do we practice? We practice the major the harmonic minor, the melodic minor, the pentatonic. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of them. Uh, but any of those, like, and that's another example, the, the minor pentatonic, we don't practice. Okay, there is, for my more advanced students, there's a different kind of minor pentatonic. There's the altered minor pentatonic, right? So where you flat, the third note of the pentatonic. Right? So there, that one is on the list. I haven't practiced that one in years. Um, there's, there's other different kinds of altered 
And that's the point, right? We have so many skills we have to practice. Hundreds of them, right? There's already hundreds of skills that we have to practice. Why make it all that more involved by adding needless, pointless modes to the mix? And when I say pointless, I'm, that's not an emotional insult. Don't, if you practice these things, don't be offended be, and take it personally. I'm just pointing out to you that if... Now, if you don't practice in a comprehensive manner the way me and my students do, then maybe this video doesn't apply to you. Maybe you need to do the modes, right? But in, in my studio, we jump all the way into and we, we, we do this. It's 20, minimum 20 exercises. There's more than this. The, the minimum that I want my students to do is 20 different exercises on every scale. I'm not going to talk about that here because I have a video. Look, look up Eddie Lewis Tonalization Studies and you'll find a video um, here on YouTube about the Tonalization Studies. But if you're going to practice that way, there is absolutely no need whatsoever to practice any of the modes. Because the modes are all inside. The, if you were to practice the Tonalization Study using over the modes it would be a hundred percent redundant okay so that's why we don't practice all those scales i do think the one exception to this that i'm saying if let's say for example i have a student that's at a university or high school or something and and they're having a scale test well then of course you want to now, here's the nice thing about that, is if you've been doing my tonalization studies, learning the scales for your test is no big deal. You just have to remember where to start, right? All the technique is already there. You just have to remember where to start, where to end, and you're finished. Okay? But other than that one exception, we, in this, in our studio, in this lesson, you don't practice those scales, all right? And there's two different reasons. The first one is because of the language for the bebop scale and the blues scale. That stuff is better learned through the language. You know, um, study the transcriptions. Practice. You know, I don't like 251 licks, but the, we don't have another word to replace that. I'm not a real big fan of 251 licks. Um, but that said, if that's all you've got to learn the language, do your 251 licks. I just think there's better ways to do that. Um, writing your own jazz etudes. I like to think of the jazz etudes as your personal jazz improvisation wish list, right? <laughs> That's how I like to look at the A2. Not, you know, it's much better to write your own A2s than to read somebody else's A2s. Writing is slow motion composition, right? And improvisation is spontaneous composition. So the process of writing a jazz A2 is the same mental process as improvising in a way. And it helps you, it's like, it's like baby steps for improv. So I do encourage that. That's a great way to learn the language. Take what you've learned in, in your listening and in the, in the transcriptions that you've learned. Take what you've learned, those bits and pieces, the motifs, and rearrange that into something that you would like to be able to play one day. And then practice that. And then after you've practiced that, do it in different keys too. Right? So anyway, that's my take on certain skills that I don't believe we should practice. Okay? And um, if you've got questions about that, please feel free to ask below. Because I don't mind answering. And if you've got hate comments, I'm all cool for that too. Alright? I invite the hate comments. 
because people do get real like invested in this stuff and i don't mind talking to you about that stuff all right anyway god bless you guys we'll see you on the next video